Dallas Willard is one of my favorite uh, thought leaders. And um, I'm so grateful I had some time to spend with him a few, a few different times. And, you know, he, he talked about this uh, kind of process for spiritual transformation called VIM, vision, intention, means. And I'm going to butcher it, but this is in short what it really means is um, you've got to be ravished by a vision. And you think of John 10, 10, there's two visions there. There's one vision of an enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. There's another vision of, of a rabbi who says, I want to give you life and life to the full. But then he says, underneath a vision that ravishes you, that you're willing to sell everything and follow it, you've got to have the intention. And that is like the robust decision to say, I'm going to do whatever it takes. You see this in the, on, the, on the field. You see DK Metcalf chasing down Buddha Baker yesterday. And like, that's because he wants to win. He's got a vision that's going to have him sprint 95 yards to tackle some dude. And, and we've got to make that decision. And then the last one is the methods or the means in which we, and the practices at which we are going to live into that vision. So for me, I recognize, and Dallas will talk about this, that we have impulsive will. We're going to do what we want to do. And this is where temptation comes out of. But you also have reflective will. This is when I reflect and I ponder, is this actually going to help me live in, in alignment with that vision? And he says, underneath both impulsive will and reflective will is embodied will. And that's like the muscle memory. So if you grew up in a, as, a, as a child of an alcoholic and you saw your parents come home and every night what they did was open up a bottle of wine or they had three, four, five beers, that's just what they did. The next day they did the same thing. That's the muscle memory of impulsive will. But there is muscle memory for reflective will. That's when we can cultivate the fruit of the spirit. So in short, my vision from John 10, 10 is that I want to live a life anchored in Jesus. And that life is one where I have nothing to prove, nothing to lose, and nothing to hide. And for me, I'm wrestling through what are the practices, especially as someone who's been achievement driven, to recognize in Christ, I got nothing to prove. So that's has actually Friday, uh, my buddy and I were doing a, a, a long conversation because next month we're focusing all on silence and solitude. Um, this past month, we focused all on confession. So every day, because we've been going through nothing to hide every morning, Monday through Friday at 6.50 a.m., we call each other and we just confess our sins from the, yes, from the day before. And again, it's just, I'm just trying to learn what does confession look like? If I want nothing to hide, I got to be able to share this with God and also with another friend. If I want nothing to prove, how do I live in silence? Again, it's the means that's trying to create that embodied will, that muscle memory so that I can live out that vision. So I'm constantly on a monthly basis trying to create what are those practices that are going to help me live in alignment. So have a vision or have an anthem, really begin to reflect on what's, what's, what's basically getting in the way of you living out that vision. And then what are the practices that can help you build the muscle memory so that you can live a life that's truly anchored in Jesus. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of how I, I break it down.